Jackson with Vertical Measures, and I'm here hosting VM's monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled, How to Leverage Earned and Owned Media to Create Effective Paid Media Programs, and will be presented by the founder of Deliver It, Bill Splitter. Bill has been involved with online marketing for over 15 years. He pioneered advertising to RSS along with other content distribution technologies that have generated revenue for the New York Times, CNET, Inc., and other large premium publishers. Bill's newest venture, Deliver.it, helps bloggers, brands, and publishers syndicate their content and broaden their reach across the social web and beyond. He's also the creator of the Content Marketing Strategies Conference, which is coming up later this year, an event that fosters conversation around content marketing. We're super excited to have him here today, and he has a lot to share. Before we get started and I hand over the presentation to Bill, I just have a few things to note. Today's webinar will be available by the latest for Monday afternoon with a recording and also the slides, if not sooner, just barring any technical difficulties. We'll also be happy to answer any of your questions, so if you think of something that comes up during the webinar, um, you can either ask us on the little question applet on your software that on the screen, or you can also tweet us with the hashtag VMWebinar. So feel free to ask your questions, I'll compile them, and we'll ask Bill after his presentation. Any questions we don't get to, we'll be sure to try and answer via email. Also, if you do have any technical difficulties, just go ahead and disconnect and then reconnect, and hopefully that will fix the problem. So with my notes complete, I will hand it off to our presenter, Bill Flitter. Thanks, Quinn. Thanks for the opportunity, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I have a short uh, agenda that we're going to go through today. Uh, but, uh, you know, really setting the stage here, a few credibility slides. Uh, then we're going to walk, I'm going to walk you through a three-step promotional uh, action plan and then uh, Q&A um, at the end, as, as Quinn said. And uh, just give me a second here. I'm, and there we go. Uh, so our, our mission at Delivered is pretty simple. Uh, it's the idea of distributing the world's content. So we uh, distribute uh, about 350, uh, two million, two and a half million uh, pieces of content every day for 350,000 businesses. Um, that goes out to about 600 million fans, followers, and subscribers. So we see a lot of content running through our system. We see a lot of uh, companies trying different things. We help companies do a lot of different things uh, uh, with their content strategy. So we have a really good idea of what works. Uh, and I think my plan um, is pretty simple, uh, that any business can take advantage of no matter what size uh, or budget that they might, uh, they might have. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here is to save you media dollars by using available data um, that it, that, uh, you know, that your earned media and your uh, owned media uh, users are generating. And we'll go through exactly what all of that means. Uh, you know, we only have 30 minutes today. We could take this in a lot of different places and go pretty in depth. But for the purpose uh, for this conversation, when I mention the word content, and we'll go through a few definitions coming up, but when I mention the word content, I'm specifically talking about uh, blog posts or content that you're creating for your website that lives maybe lives on a blog type setup um, might be enhanced with pictures, uh, videos, etc. And I know there's all there's numerous kinds of content, but again, for this 30 minute uh, discussion, let's uh, let's let's use uh, my definition of content so that it all makes sense. But what's happening right now is is, is a huge fundamental change in online media buying, and it's something very few companies are taking advantage of today, the, the plan that I'm going to uh, share with you. And, and most, uh, most companies are marketing in silos. Um, they look at their paid media budgets, their social media budgets, PR budgets, all, all separate budgets with little communication between what works. But some marketers are, uh, revalue, are uh, reevaluating uh, the ability of paid media to serve as a, as a vehicle to amplify the impact of earned and owned, rather than viewing each media channel as a separate and totally disconnected effort. 
And, in, and as we know, content connects brands and people. It's the, it's the lifeblood of a modern brand. Uh, and no truer is that statement today. We've all been hearing business, you know, that businesses need to think like a publisher. But most businesses are not equipped uh, to think like publishers. And again, we talk about this transformation that's happening with advertisers. And, and now we can talk directly to our consumers, that middleman, that publisher, traditional publisher, so to speak, uh, you know, is, is, is obviously still there, but uh, we can now speak directly to customers with our own content. And, you know, classically, media companies were the ones that were building their audiences around that content. And then advertisers paid to be in front of that audience. Now we can create our own, right? And, and connect directly with audiences. But the big piece, the promotional piece, is messy. You know, there's multiple platforms that we need to send content to, multiple content types to format pictures, infographics, uh, uh, video, of course, and then this, this uh, disparate metrics to normalize. You know, a brand is not set up to be a publisher. Uh, most of this, done, most of the distribution is done either manually or it's it's an afterthought, or we'll just stick it on Twitter, right? Or we'll just stick it on Facebook. Um, you know, but people don't find content by mistake or by accident. We need to deliver that content to to them. But consumers are, you know, their attention is fragmented. They're consuming content in these five minute chunks of time, and so we need to think about and take that into consideration when we're creating content. How can I reach that how can I reach that customer when I when you know I'm I'm competing against their friends, right, who are sharing content in that stream. And most content today, as you guys know, is consumed in a stream of some sort. A Twitter stream, a Facebook stream, right? Um, on your mobile uh, device, it's all this you know, rapid fire content coming through. And it's how do we how do we arise rise above that? Uh, noise that's that's happening. So we need to find peace with paid paid distribution. You know, marketers often forget the importance of promoting their content. You know, like I said, people don't find content by accident. Uh, every content plan needs a complementary promotional plan that combines paid, owned, and earned media. So let's go through a, a few definitions. Again, just really setting the stage here. Uh, I want to clearly define, you know, what what I mean by paid, owned, and earned. I'm sure we've all heard their, those terms, and they can be confusing, and you know, we forget which is which is which. But consumer uh, consumer media consumption habits have evolved uh, in recent years with the growth of social networks, mobile devices, and tablets, and this uh, and it causes a shift in the ways that paid, earned and owned uh, content are created and implemented and leveraged for that matter. Uh, again, but today for today's discussion we're talking about you know maybe some blog posts that you're creating. How do we how do we get the most out of those? How do we trans how do we uh, create smarter media buys using that that content that you're already creating? So for the for the purpose again paid are those uh, I think that's pretty straightforward text links, paid search, affiliate marketing. Uh, native advertising, anything you're paying to distribute. Owned, it's your website, your blog, your Facebook, your Twitter accounts, your YouTube. And then earned is anything that is a result of that word of mouth, retweets, shares, pins, uh, press coverage. Okay, so again, paid, owned, and earned. Think about that paid as, as strangers, owned as your customers, and, and earned uh, as fans and potential customers. All right, feedback. Uh, the feedback cycle of yesterday uh, were, uh, was the focus group, right? Gathered a bunch of people in a big room uh, to talk about a particular brand, what they thought, what they felt. Uh, Marker sat behind the, the glass wall taking notes. That feedback was long. Um, you have group think going on in, in that room. And of course, it's expensive. And it's not suited. Uh, or the rapid fire always on communication that takes place on Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest across the web today. It's just not suited. So what, what do we need to do? We need to think about how do we leverage, how do we leverage uh, social media? How do we leverage our own social media channels 
uh, to make better decisions. And it's real time, it's low cost, uh, and never ha before have we witnessed such instant feedback. It's, but it's a blessing and a, and, a, uh, and a curse, it's not perfect. Uh, because we have to react so quickly, uh, we may make mistakes. But the traditional fo focus group isn't perfect either, right? So really what I'm trying to say there is, you know, no solution is the perfect solution, but I think with today's always on uh, communications, uh, by leveraging social media, we can really get some quick feedback to affect our paid media programs. And if we corral that, that social media energy correctly, we can do great things with the data and information that we're, that we're collecting. And that's what we're going to go into. Uh, that's what we're going to go into next. So this is a lean forward moment. This is the time to stop writing those emails, put that vente latte down, and, and uh, let, let's, get into, let's get into the meat of, uh, of this discussion. All right. So how do we do this? Again, uh, you know, like I said, uh, this is a simple plan but it's very effective. We have, uh, again, like I said, worked with multiple companies on a, uh, on a plan like this. Uh, some have gotten awards for what I'm about to show you. Uh, we um, deliver it was recently uh, awarded uh, as well for, for uh, what we do at, uh, as a company at AdTech. We're one of the uh, um, AdTech uh, innovative, uh, innovators for 2013. So across so what, again, let's concentrate on this. We'll spend a little bit of time on this slide so you can completely understand it. But first step, obviously create compelling content. What does that mean, right? That, that's, you have to define that. Uh, there's a great feedback loop that, we're, that uh, we'll walk through uh, looking at what's working in your social media to affect the kind of the content you create. But it's got to start someplace, right? You've got to create your first, uh, first blog post. Uh, and you know, then you have to think, well, how, how will I promote this great piece of content that I just created? How will you get the word out and ensure that the right people see it and share it? This can't be taken. Uh, this can be taken care of, uh, you know, uh, not at the end of the process. These questions have to be answered at the beginning before you ever start your content creation effort. You know, again, for years, marketers have viewed paid, owned, and earned as separate strategies. They would blast a message out, you know, through paid media and showcase their own marketing message and earned. Uh, so we have to break those silos down and really look at uh, leveraging all of the data and especially the owned and earned data uh, that we are collecting in, in rapid fire. So basically what uh, the plan is this, the, the overview is we want to distribute content to your owned and earned media. And when it goes to, you know, or it's a cycle, right? It goes to your own media. People stumble upon that. They're going to share it uh, through earned media. Traffic comes back. So let's take, start taking a look at all of that data that we're collecting. Um, and again, we'll go through this next. And then see how that can affect our paid media programs. What intelligence? Who's clicking on what? What they're sharing with one another? What, uh, uh, what they're pinning? How can we really leverage that data? And then it can obviously can also help you create new strategies for uh, content and what content to create. All right, so the promotional plan. First, distribute to your owned media. We're going to measure owned and earned performance, and then we're going to amplify what's working. Okay, first step, distribute. I always believe in uh, getting every ounce of, of uh, every ounce out of every piece of content that you create. So we want to reuse, reformat, and republish. Okay? If you build it once, that's the beautiful thing about content. It fits the container of the delivery container, the where it's going to end up. Right? You can take a, a beautiful blog post and chunk that down into multiple um, formats. Or you can take an, in, uh, an infographic, for example, right, and create some extra uh, ex or create uh, extracts from it with interesting statistics, right? Don't always think. Don't just post uh, an infographic on your on your blog, right? Uh, that's an image. So uh, you know, take take some of that data and create additional blog posts. Break that up into little chunks, so it then does flow down 
and easily seen in other channels, right? If it's mobile or if it's uh, on Twitter, right? Twitter is not not the best for showing infographics, so we need to chunk that down into little pieces, right? So, uh, you know, again, take each each piece of content and think, well, where is it going to end up, and what? How do I reformat that? But it all starts with the quality of your content, right? That makes optimizing across channels easier and provides seamless messaging. All right. So uh, we want to make content searchable, scannable, and shareable. For all the, you know, the, all the thought and creativity that we invest in the creation of cool content, we need to put an equal amount of thought and creativity into its distribution. Right? Think about all the places that that one blog post could potentially end up in search, in social, right? On mobile, in, in RSS feeds or other feeds, right? Uh, in in the news, right? How can how can we make this blog post newsworthy? that we're consuming, that headline becomes the most important thing. You know, that the really great content is the 140 characters that you're tweeting. But once someone clicks through to that, that's where the magic happens. That keeps them engaged. That content behind that, that headline or behind that click has to be uh, just as good, right? And you're not, we, we got to be careful not tricking someone, right, just to get that click. And automation is not a dirty word, all right? Uh, it's okay, you know, can you imagine? Imagine sending uh, one email at a time to thousands of your customers. You, know, you just wouldn't do that. So automating the syndication of long-form content to social is like sending an email newsletter. Now, I'm not advocating that that's all you do, right? There's still a place for that engagement one-on-one -on, -one on Twitter, on Facebook, answering someone's questions, replying to them. Uh, that is, there's definitely a place for that. Just like sending one-on-one -on -one emails with somebody, uh, it's, I think it's a great correlation. You wouldn't send individual newsletters for everybody. There's tools to help you do that. And that's the one thing I forgot to bring up. Each section I'm going to go through, at the end of that section, uh, there, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show a, a a slide that says, okay, great, this is wonderful, well, how do I get started, who can I turn to? I'll show uh, some examples uh, of companies that you can work with to help you with some of these things. But think about, okay, so I'm going to assemble all of my pieces. What, I, I'm going to sit down, I have this great piece of content, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to use YoPlay as a great example here. Um, I have videos, recipes, news, press, images, how am I going to assemble those um, into creating a, you know, a beautiful blog post? And then where is that going to go, right? Is it going to go across mobile? Um, is it going to end up in, uh, in search? How do I format the, the picture so it does show up in image search? Or if I have a video, uh, am I just going to place that video on YouTube? Where is it going to go from there? Right, again, a beautiful thing about content is it can be chunked down into individual pieces and reformatted uh, to fit the container. You know, and then, of course, we're going to share that across social. How does it look there? And these are just a bunch of examples. You guys have seen a lot of these. I'm going to think about optimizing uh, my, my uh, content for search, right? That's what Vertical Measures is great at. Uh, and how do, what about sharing it across blogs and websites? Do I, am I planning for that? Uh, what about mobile? How does it, how do, what's the mobile experience? You know, the, I, I know uh, if in the YoPlay example here, uh, you know, over 50% of moms are consuming content on mobile devices, right? So how does your content appear for moms on the go when they're standing in line at the grocery store or they're at the park on a play date? But, uh, and, and, but don't, you know, don't think about uh, over-optimizing, especially when it comes to search. Uh, you know, yes, the, the Google computer can read it, but, you know, can your target audience? A few, a few tools to help uh, with all of this. 
Uh, so if, again, if you're looking to distribute or do some blogger outreach, look at Group High. It's a great, great product. You know, who, do I, who can I reach out to uh, send my, uh, my content to? Uh, it's, it's, like, it's a, direct, a search engine for bloggers, essentially, is what it is. Uh, Linkia has another, uh, is, is you can set up a campaign there and target specific um, social and blogging communities. Or uh, look for OnSwipe or, or Flipboard to help you transform your content in, into a nice mobile experience. Uh, Vertical Measures, a uh, great, uh, great company to help you with your SEO, or uh, Scribe, built right inside of WordPress. And, and then uh, my company, or, or Compost, if you're looking to really combine all of those into, into one. All right, let's get into some measurement. So great, we created all of this content, it's distributed, it's reformatted, uh, we're using tools to do that, but really what's important, right? Again, what, what are we trying to do? I'm trying to help you uh, save media dollars. That's, that's the aim of this webinar. The buying media uh, has, has always been a gamble, right? We put out an ad, a display ad. Think about that. We put out a display ad in several of those, and uh, we have to pay for all the mistakes that we've made. Okay? So we have to, uh, when we distribute that, we're looking for what ad is going to work, but we've already paid for all those mistakes. The nice thing about uh, distributing content, especially with social, now with that social is around, we can put out a few pieces of content, see what works, and then pay uh, and distribute those things that do work. And we're going to go into that in a little bit, but let's first talk about measurement. There's lots of social media signals, right? More data than, uh, than we can actually process. Uh, and we have to process this stuff really quickly, right? We're, uh, and of course, lots of tools to do that, and we'll go through that at the end. But you have your likes, the, the pins, uh, the, the, the shares. You know, we can look at geo and timing, right? There's a trail of data that, that we all leave behind when we interact on social media. You know, the pictures we post, the comments we make, and the people we associate with. It, provides all sorts of, uh, of, of data on, and it reveals you know, our portrait online. You know, we need to look at, um, uh, you know, it, it's, oh, it's overwhelming, right? We're just overwhelmed with the amount of data. And we've all felt like this guy, right? We've all felt like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, I, I need to digest all of this. How can I do it? Um, there's just so much data. And then ask yourself, what do you really need? What's really in, is going to be important for you? I've really broken this down into three key things that I think, again, our goal is to help you use earned and owned to make better paid decisions. So what, are you, what do you need to make a better paid decision? Uh, you know, what do you need out of your content? What stats should you be looking at? So first off, look at, uh, make sure that any tool that you're using gives you a list of headlines, ranked by activity. Right, do some content analysis. What's happening? Clicks, retweets. You can get to the sale, and that's important to you. Perfect. But have those ranked top to bottom, because that's what we're going to use. That's the we're going to use the cream of that of that content then to find a like audience through paid media. Right? How do we find? Well, make sure that you're doing demographic analysis. Again, it's something that's often overlooked. Determine uh, determine who clicked what. Right, maybe you do have different groups. You might be surprised that, you know, I thought we targeted moms between X and Y, and you know, wow, we're, you know, it's really between A and Z, uh, you know, the type of people that are using our con uh, our content. And then finally, sentiment analysis. Uh, this this will help you find popular keywords or themes for your content, which then is going to set us up when we're looking to buy media, but also uh, is great to determine. Uh, future content, right? Every time I write about, uh, you know, let's say yogurt, I am getting a high click-through rate and sales, and people are driving back to or coming back to my site. So it's really important that we can digest this information quickly, make determinations, and then move on with our paid media programs. Right? Again, the idea is to create compelling content, lower your media costs, and reduce waste. All right, monitoring actionable data. Uh, again, we talked about that creating that list of headlines, but cut out non-performing content, right? Put it out in social, see what works, move on, and keep refining your strategy all the time. Right? So change and, re and re uh, republish low-performing stories. Also, something we often often don't think about. 
think about all the content that comes through your stream on a daily basis. You, you're going to miss the majority of it, right? It's okay to republish something. Maybe change the headline a little bit based on the knowledge that we gain through social media, right? Ooh, this post didn't work, but let me, let me tweak it a little bit. Maybe I just had the wrong headline. Let's see what we can do uh, to put that out there again. And finally, a demographic analysis. Uh, discover what resonates with uh, different social groups. Determine what content to create for each group, and then direct paid media to that that exact audience. And then monitor actionable data. Surface future store ideas and directions. Right, if we're looking at the keywords, and we do a you know, simple tag cloud, and it serves as a signal for future product sales and, and, and marketing, and then uh, supplies keyword and category data. Again, I believe in simple metrics. I think these, you know, we've used these metrics over and over to to do to uh, you know um, uh, buy media and buy effect and, and create effective paid media programs. A few tools to help. Of course, you know, you have your Google Analytics. You can always look at Chartbeat is great for real time information. If you're looking at demos, a few companies there. Of course, Quantcast has been around for a while, and Social Baker's looking at your social demographics. Uh, Topsy, Hootsuite uh, for, for more social data, and then uh, uh, my company delivered also. All right, let's amplify what's working. So let's be realistic about earned media, though, right? We put it out there. We have to pray uh, a little bit. Uh, hopefully something is going to work, right? But remember, no traffic equals no conversation. So paid media can be useful. But what's the pro plan? Uh, I broke this down, again, into three steps in three easy things. So promote, proactively drive traffic. Okay? Retar We're going to go into each of these two. Um, retarget, to re-message your blog visitors or your website uh, visitors. And finally, optimize, review and refine. This is where your f the feedback loop comes in. Okay? Number one, promote. Uh, so we've talked about assembling the assets, right? The targeting piece of this, right? This is the paid piece. So look at the keyword and category and demographic information. Now you know the exact audience you need to find. Right? You know the keywords you need to buy. You know the, the categories. Uh, and then content. Repurpose what's resonated with your earned and owned audience. Let the other stuff go. Right? You create five pieces in a week. Right? Maybe two really work with your audience. Take those and amplify those. Never before have we had the ability to do that. I've been buying media. Uh, since the early 80s, and you know, it was always a guess on what the message was and what ad to do. We spent hours and hours, re, you know, back and forth on, on ad units, and you know, they went into print, and that was it. You, you know, you prayed at that point. Um, n again, never before have we had this opportunity to look at all of this data, refine it, and react in real time. And of course, uh, you know, RSS is going to help you automate a lot of this process. A lot of companies now take RSS feeds on a paid media side. So anytime you create something, uh, it automatically goes, it can go out um, via the, uh, through RSS and, and into, uh, let's say, uh, Outbrain as an example. They take uh, RSS feeds now. And of course, always look at adding tracking link depends. If you're using Google Analytics, use the UTM function. I have an example there. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a question mark and everything after the fact. Make sure you use those and your outbound traffic. So you, your customer doesn't necessarily see that until they land. But make sure you are using that uh, functionality within Google because it can be pretty powerful in, you know, going back and looking at those stats. And all right, next, uh, just some examples, right? Here's, uh, we've all seen these at the end of editorial, right? Uh, some places to promote your content. You can create dynamic display ad units. Uh, you know, we've all heard the talk about native ad placements now. Uh, you know, full page, your full page article syndicated to uh, different websites. Again, think this is just all repurposing that, that one blog post or that those several blog posts that you've created. You know, think about mobile. StumbleUpon has a great mobile solution. This is how the content looks on there. Um, it's called out at the top. You can see it says a sponsored page. But again, it's, it's native to the environment that it's placed in. Uh, and 
one of the things that's often overlooked is retargeting, uh, especially with content. This way, with retargeting, you can recapture visitors' attention after they leave your website, maybe with another piece of content. Bring them back in. They, they know your brand. Uh, bring them back in with another piece of content. You know, remarket a sequence of articles or offers, right? Just don't maybe put out the same, uh, same offer but, uh, or content. Right? Get, them, get them back in. Uh, to your website. Don't think about just remarketing, or I'm sorry, don't think about just resending out to social. Use the tools that are available through, um, you know, through a uh, remarketing process. This is often overlooked and it's probably one of the more effective ways to get bring people back. And it's going to retain your existing customers and remind them. And then optimize. We're coming to the end of the, of the presentation here. Uh, but uh, the, you know, we want to review and refine. Right? Use all of these social signals that we have and the three that I've pointed out. You know, uh, look at applying the same techniques that we've just discussed, right? Content analysis, demographic analysis, sentiment analysis, rewrite your content. Use that as your guiding light. And then create or curate new content uh, to feed the cycle. Uh, you don't always have to create it. Start looking at maybe other, other, uh, other content from other sources pull that in, and uh, that's going to you know, be educational for your target market. And tools to help. Uh, press, right, is a great, great uh, you know, business wire, PR web, PR news wire, great for distributing your content. Outbrain, post release, and Manta on the paid side. Uh, content seeding, you know, how can I get my content in front of bloggers who will share it, right? Two great companies there. Um, and then lastly is deliver it. We wrap that all up. Together. Um, in the slide presentation, when it's posted, plenty of other tools out there, right? Um, I've only highlighted a few to make it real simple. Think people that I've companies that I've worked with or associated with, uh, but the complete landscape uh, URLs at the top of that page. All right, recap again: create your content, put it out to earned and own. Look at the data that it's generating, right? and then amplify what's working. Very simple plan, very effective. Uh, we've seen this work over and over and over again. All right, so did we accomplish our goal? I hope so, right? This plan allows you to quickly test a few pieces of content and reduce your media, media dollars by amplifying what works. If, again, if it works for your owned and earned audience, it will have a better chance of succeeding with a paid media audience. You know, again, you're likely trying to attract the same audience that you already have. All right, and as Quinn, uh, I want to invite you all, as Quinn alluded to, to our content marketing conference. It's next month. Uh, save 50% if you use vertical measures when you go to content marketing now forward slash conferences, or just go to content marketing now and you'll see uh, a link to the conference there on that website. But uh, use vertical measures, uh, save, uh, save 50% on, on the cost. Uh, right now you can get maximized your saving before the uh, early bird ends, and, uh, I believe on Monday, that is. And that's in Berkeley, Berkeley, California, a nice place. And that's it. Time to ask Thanks, questions. Bill. Yeah, we've got a few, and um, I know we're excited about the conference coming up. Our president, Arnie Ken, will be speaking there, too. So we'll be learning even more about all of this topic. So um, just to start off, we have a question. Um, kind of in your experience, what is, and obviously you take this from the data of looking at your earned and owned media, but in your experience, what is the kind of best converting content type? And do you see some type of trend happening, you know, via a video or a white paper or you know, whatever. Is there something that is the best converting type of content piece that you've seen? Yeah, that's a hard. That's a hard one. Uh, you know, it. it uh, what we're seeing is different content works differently on the different channels. Uh, you know, right. again, you know, pictures always help. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. tell a, tell the quick story, uh, and it's really about. That again, going back to that headline, that compelling headline that's telling the truth, of course, or getting somebody back to the website, and where we're seeing the differences in how that page is formatted. 
think about mobile, your mobile experience. You need it to be quick. You want bullet points. You want headlines, uh, big headlines and subheadlines right throughout the body of that content. Um, you know, I can't say you know one thing works better than better than the other. Pictures versus infographics versus text. Uh, I think again, it it uh, it's going to depend on on uh, on where it's going. Right. It's got to fit the right. environment. Yeah, and it sounds like you know the formatting is super important just to make sure it's kind of even just visually appealing to someone and easily accessible. Be it across exactly you know, right. If it just looks like a big that. block of text, it's, it, that's harder right. to read. Right, break it up, uh, break it up a, a bit. And that headline, I can't stress that enough. You know, again, we get all of these updates streaming in on a daily basis. We're accessing, you know, on Twitter and Facebook, the the headline. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about uh, uh, Facebook, you can have an image that you know, captures your attention a little bit more. Uh, but that mm -hmm. headline is, is is so important. Yeah. Um, well, I know we talk a lot about, you know, saving media dollars and trying to get the most bang for your buck, basically. And I'm just wondering, you know, we do have a lot of small business owners that attend these webinars and a lot of people who are entrepreneurs. Are, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are in terms of, you know, doing this type of work on a limited budget and being able to get the most out of it. What are some steps you can take? Yeah, you know, and, and as I said, it does, you don't have to be a, a Cisco or a Ford to implement this strategy. I think it even works better for small businesses mm -hmm. because they can get the, they get their hands on this data a lot easier for you know through some of the tools that I that I showed. Uh, you know, you can spend uh, you know as little as a thousand dollars a month and be pretty effective about driving traffic. There's lots of sources out there. You know, we talked about again a few of those paid sources. A um, lot of the, um, a lot of them are are, are uh, l uh, less costly than what you're probably paying on Google. You know, keywords on Google are very expensive. Um, again, I I think it, for the small business plan is perfect. They create a piece of content once, and there's enough tools out there to help them reformat that. Uh, spend less time just thinking about you know reformatting. We have them you know selling to their customers and using that same content in a paid media channel. I hope that answers the question. I mean, there's, there's yeah. again plenty of sources like Outbrain uh, or Zamanta that you know are, are you know cost cost per click um, you know below twenty cents. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely possible. Just you know, taking those first steps to to get started, basically. Um, I think the the next question we have is about evergreen content and about you know past content that's performing very well for you and mm -hmm. has been performing well for you for maybe years. I know you talk about repurposing and reformatting and you know what if there is a content piece that is still doing great for you, still converting for you, how can you even amplify that further if it's a content piece that has been on your site for a long time? Yeah, you know, one of the one of the things that I do in that particular case is I you know, I'll I'll look at my data and says, wow, this piece of this piece of content, you know, like you said, it it, it uh, uh, it's been a strong performer. It drives lots of traffic, and I may experiment rewriting the headline and resending that. Oftentimes, people write again. They're likely not, uh, you know, they don't remember from you know one month to another. And yeah, keep at it. And then also think about, well, like I said, do do that analysis, that uh, keyword and, and sentiment analysis on that piece of content to figure out what that really is about, so you can create an update. Uh, update that content, and I, I repurpose content all the time that I've written a few years ago, even, and uh, give it a refresher if there's anything that needs to be uh, needs to be changed. Uh, I, I think that is an effective strategy. Again, going back to that small business budget, right, uh, mm -hmm. and, and your time. You know, uh, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And of course, vertical measures can talk about the SEO impact of that, but. Um, uh, you know, we we do that uh, ourselves, and I encourage uh, businesses to do that too. Great, and I think that just we have one more question, and it's more specific to um, promoting on social media. So we have this, you know, Facebook promoted post, and it's kind of changing and evolving um, through Facebook system. And mm -hmm. the question is just how? What do you think about the system? Do you think it's effective? And 
is this a great way to reach people, or is it just more of a way to create buzz around a piece of content? Can you actually convert from it, or is it just something to kind of do once in a while? What do you think about Facebook promoted posts? Well, I, I, uh, I think what's really important there is we have to remember that content is not a one and done thing. Right, content mm -hmm. is, is we have to create content on an ongoing basis. So that's the first first piece of that that's really important. You can't you're not going to be successful if you create one piece of content, look at your ROI and say, Oh, this didn't work, I'm not gonna do another one. Content marketing takes time and it's 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 a it's a marathon versus a sprint. It's not direct marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can be effective. Just you know, I Facebook yeah, no, Facebook you know, like you said, they are changing, and it's an, evol and it's an evolving process. Uh, but I, you know, they're they're going to get that figured out. It's great because most of Facebook content is consumed on mobile, and when you're looking at that stream, and even Twitter uh, with the, with the promoted tweets, and I've heard a lot of companies uh, have great success with those products. Yeah, and they've just right. added Twitter just added five hundred. Uh, more targeting parameters so you can really drill down oh. into who you want to reach. Wow, yeah. It's, I feel like every every week there's something new with promoting on, on social media, so I'm sure it's still going to be changing. Well, I always believe content is a new ad unit. Again, because mm -hmm. you can oh, yeah. make that piece of content once and it can be multiple, it can have multiple different looks and feels to it. Yeah, and I think just a big takeaway from your answer is just say, you know, Content marketing is not a sprint, it's a marathon and a long one at that. And I know um, Arnie at Penn, our president, has been focusing on just how long does mar content marketing actually take? You know, it, it can be a long time. And I know HubSpot published something where they said it could be six to nine months of posting three times a week and promoting and distributing and doing everything that you talked about to really see effects. But when you do see effects, you know, they can be quite, quite, quite great. Um, but you have to sit alone in your, you know, room blogging and posting and doing a lot of work to even get to that point. So I think that's a big takeaway is just, you know, you, get, you can't get anywhere by sprinting. You really do have to do the work. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, no, you're right on. Cool. Well, I think that's all the time we have for questions. But, Bill, I just want to thank you for joining us and everyone here at Vertical Measures. We learned a lot today, so thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, and thank you, everyone, yeah, for, for cool. uh, participating. Great. And um, everyone, just please mark your calendar. We've got a webinar next month. It's on May 9th, where our very own Kayla Strong and Brenna Baldoff will be presenting on the topic, Powerful and Effective Link Strategies with Advanced Search Command. So with this month we're doing content. We're talking a little bit about linking next month. Um, so it should be interesting. Registration will be open for that pretty soon over on our website. It's verticalmeasures.com slash webinars. So that should be up later today. Um, but I think that's it for now. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. And um, hope to see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.